even though at the tier one level we're talking about 8,000 parts total, it seems like a lot, but it's not a lot. The management of the tier two is really where we excel. And I'd like to illustrate that with an example. Meet the car computer. Very innocent sounding name, and it's anything but. This is an absolute monster to manage. So I think you've all seen the picture on the left of the autopilot board. That's the top of the autopilot board. The autopilot board also has a bottom, and the bottom is populated heavily with components. On the other side of the heat sink, you've got the MCU, the multimedia cluster board. This board is equally complex. It's also double-sided, eight-layered. And these boards, these computers run so hot at peak operation that they have to be liquid-cooled liquid through a heat sink. So this assembly requires taking those two boards and then bonding them to a heat sink that's uh, hermetically sealed as an assembly, of course, flashing the software and all that sort of stuff. And then that's one part number that comes to Tesla. So this is an example of one tier one part number that's a very complex assembly to manage at the tier two level. And there's more than 7,000 components here. There's a, you know, as we stand here, a component's being assembled onto a car computer every 1.4 milliseconds. Mm -hmm. The line that builds this computer is the length of a football field. So it's, it's quite complicated. And initially, when we first started building this board, due to the complexity of it, we had to rely heavily on labor. But once we dialed in the quality, the rates, and the yield, we started focusing on making this more efficient. The only way to control cost is by removing labor. The first step is removing labor. The second step is fully automating. The third step is turning off the lights and letting the factory run, ideally. And that's going to be the goal for us here. So 95% but our work is not done. We're going to be going a lot further than this. So this illustrates the point that a part is not a part. A part has a lot of complexity underneath it. Supply chain is, is a game of multiple tiers. And, and what's made us successful is our involvement in all the details with our supply engineers uh, that are Tesla employees. They're Tesla supply engineers. So they're like on our payroll that go and ramp up these capabilities that are suppliers. And then just managing each and every attribute of it. You know, 7,000 a day through the chip shortage, through the pandemic, through all the other stuff that we had to deal with, was, was very difficult to manage. But because we had all the details, we were able to pull this off. Um, of course, supply chain is not just about parts. It's also about logistics and a lot of other things. So I'll hand it off to Roshan for sharing some stats. Yeah, so talking about inbound complexity, just over the course of just last year, we moved about 16 million pallets uh, from our suppliers to our factories. Just to visualize that, if you put those pallets side by side, uh, it could cover the uh, half the circumference of the Earth. Uh, and talking about, again, the Tier 2 complexity, over 1 billion electronic components get moved every week to support the production that Karn and team manages. This is right now, 1 billion components a week. Right. 52 billion a year. This is going to go up, by the way. And, and on top of that, we also have the responsibility to make sure the right component is supplied to the right service location to support the growing fleet of our vehicles. And we have about 685 uh, service centers that these components need to show up just in time. Um, and then we've also been, uh, as, 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 uh, as a result of pandemic and even before that, we're working, uh, working on dual sourcing and triple sourcing some of our critical components. As a result of it, we have suppliers around 45 countries in the world. Yeah, our approach really has been to <coughs> bring the manufacturing of subcomponents closer to the point of consumption. It makes the supply chain more green because you're not burning diesel, moving stuff around. And it also gives us the security of supply of having multiple sources in case one factory gets taken offline. And that's how we got through pandemic also. Yep. <coughs> So last three years were incredibly hard. Karn and I used to look a lot longer <laughs> pre-COVID. But on a serious note, pandemic really changed the game of supply chain management. We were just not being a regular supply chain person. We were rolling up our sleeves and negotiating with state governments, city managers, mayors to help kickstart our uh, suppliers to restart their operations. You know, there are some really inspiring stories where our supply chain team really fought hard to make sure that the fa factories don't, don't go down. And, and uh, it's also a testament to the resilience of our supplier partners. Having said that, you know, 